What's happening here? I think I'm live. All right. Well, I am uh, I am here a little early on this Monday because I have uh, something has come up for an hour from now. So uh, let's get to it. So today's question is for Michael, and it's a um, it's kind of a, an open one that I just really thought was great and want to speak to a little bit. So Michael says, do you have to come to terms with your past in order to have a better today? And Michael and I had a bit of conversation around this, um, around exactly what's going on for him. But I just love just that question. Do you have to come to terms with the past in order to have a better today? Just that felt like there's so much in there to speak to. So just to give you a tiny bit of context, um, Michael had some issues in a past work experience where he did something that he feels was totally the right thing. Uh, but others did not agree. And since then, he doesn't work with those people anymore, and a lot of things have changed in his life. So where he is is kind of in his his head, and not where Michael is, but where Michael's head is, is replaying all that. And, and, you know, I did the right thing, and why couldn't they see it? And what if I had done something else? And then what would have happened? Where would I be now? And, you know, kind of toying with the idea of talking to some of those people uh, but also thinking it's not going to make any difference and it was a long time ago. So, you know, we all know this big jumble of stuff. Um, but that question, do you have to come to terms with the past in order to have a better today? It's so interesting because you'll hear many people say that um, we don't have to go into the past. We don't have to go in and fix the past, which is good because we can't. <laughs> there is no past. I mean, there the past exists as a current moment thinking, as current moment thought right now. Now, of course, we're human beings, right? And we're full of current moment thinking. And a lot of it is about the past. So in this reality that we live within, there's a very active full past, right? There's all kinds of stuff there. That's what our psychological experience gives us is a past and a future. All of this along this timeline, you know? So, so we live within that 100%. That's what our psychology gives us. And that part of that statement is incredibly important. That's what our psychology gives us. So in our heads, there's a big past and in our heads, our mind will want to work out things that, that don't feel resolved from the past. This is what our mind loves to do, loves to do it because it's smart and it likes to show us that it's smart and it loves us. And so it's like, hey, I'm pretending like I'm a mind here, like, hey, I'm smart. I can fix things. I can solve puzzles. I love you, the person I inhabit. So of course, let me put all my smarts and all my energy toward fixing things so that you can be happy. That's how a mind works pretty much. So so we have a mind that's that's thinking about the past, kind of creating this idea of the past, really. And then and then things don't always sit well with us, things we did or things we wonder about. And so a mind will pounce on that and work it out for us, try to work it out for us, replay it and rethink it. And what should I do? And should I have this conversation or should I have or whatever, right? It does that. That alone, I just think is like, one of the coolest things in the world to really see. You have a machine in your head that loves you so much it wants to solve old problems, but it can't solve those problems. Now, I'm not saying that you're stuck here. I'm just saying your mind is not likely to be the one to go back and solve those problems. Like if your mind had this all figured out and knew all the answers and could do all this the way that it kind of claims it can, where was it when the problem was happening? Where has it been all this time in between? Sometimes your mind's just asleep on the job. Other times it's off solving some other problem from some other time and space, you know? So it will totally feel when we're in it, like, wow, this is real and solid and it's an issue and I need to get to the bottom of it. So let me think about it some more and let me figure out what I should do. Universal. That is universal. We all feel that at times. But I think it's gigantic to kind of be able to back up a little bit and see, huh, 
I'm here now, mind is over here replaying this past thing and trying to solve it all. And I don't know what that's really going to buy me. Now, here's the thing where I think we get kind of caught up when, when we hear someone say, well, you don't have to go into the past to, to solve anything for the present or to make the future better or anything like that. We can, and when we say there is no past, the past is current moment thinking, that's all it is, right in this very moment thinking about another time, which is basically our imagination, because that other time is not in, it's not in front of us, it's not here, it's in our heads, but it's our imagination, uh, bringing up images and incredibly biased memories and all kinds of stuff about another time that we're not living in, except we're living in it right now as it's coming up. So. When you hear those things, it's so natural and so easy for, again, our mind does this to say, oh, well, okay, then I, I guess that means I just should leave it alone. If it's not real and it doesn't exist, and if my mind's not gonna solve these problems, that means don't look there, don't go there, look forward only, whatever, you know, whatever a mind might come up with that. And that's not true either. Like that's just another, way that a mind will come in and want to figure out a game plan you know that's another game plan your mind will come up with and that's not always what feels right for us in the moment so even though there's no such thing as a past really there is no past there's current moment thinking even though your mind's not going to solve old unresolved issues for you sometimes right now in a moment it really feels right to go have a conversation with someone from years ago about something that happened a long, long time ago. Right? I mean, that makes sense. Of course that can be the thing to do. Of course that can feel right. And of course that can be really helpful. And, and here's what those of us maybe listening to this, who are a little more sophisticated in, in all of this, might say, I hear this all the time from people, well, yeah, but I'm just doing that as a way to try to get my mind to be quiet. And that's kind of a cop out or that's uh, that's not the best way to, like what I should really be saying is that my mind's just spinning and making all this up and I should just, you know, not be affected by it. No, no, that's not at all how it is. <laughs> that's another rule a mind will make up and slap on you. Of course, like we're human beings, like if it, of course we do what we do in order to quiet our minds. I think pretty much everything we do in life is in order to quiet our minds. Can we come in and see a bigger picture and see, oh wow, my mind's just talking nonsense, just trying to help me and it'll quiet on its own. And can that bring some peace? Absolutely. And it does. More, we are out, you know, I don't know, even know what I mean by we, but in general, people who have a sense of how we work and that there's a world beyond appearances, we're not out sitting people down quite as much saying, you need to talk this through with me so I can feel better. Like we know, we know, we can see through some of that, but hey, it doesn't mean you aren't still a, a human being in this world and in this world that can't totally benefit from having an old conversation again from getting some clarity, from asking someone to do something for you, for saying, hey, can you explain to me why you did this 10 years ago? And that's okay if that's what feels right to you to do. And you don't have to do that. So like that's, I'm picturing this Venn diagram, right? Where you have the center where it overlaps, like that's the sweet spot. We're free to do anything that makes sense. Even if our mind is telling us that's not very enlightened, you should just let that go. It's just what a mind would say. We're free to do anything that feels right. And we're also incredibly blessed to know that we don't need it because sometimes you don't get it. <laughs> Often you don't get it. You might have the talk and hope that it quiets your mind and sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. And so it's great to know too that we aren't dependent on anything out there, any person to say any magic words, you know, to help us help us find peace. Like. When your mind gets sick of hearing itself talk, or when you get sick of hearing your mind talk, you just, you'll just look away. It falls quiet all the time and you find peace waiting for you. So it's not a thing we have to go out and make happen. And as humans, we can do all kinds of things to help it along. So I hope that makes some sense. I just love, uh, 
I love seeing these places where we start to see something that's helpful and then our mind rushes in and makes a bunch of rules about it that are kind of invisible until they are. But, you know, if, if we feel boxed in or weighed down or like I should do this or I shouldn't do this, all of that is just excellent feedback. Oh, I'm in my head. My mind's making up rules for me again. And we get to just peel back another layer of thought and belief and step into another little bit of freedom and just do whatever makes sense because it's all it's all OK. If it feels right and it makes sense, that's what you do. So thank you, Michael, for bringing up this question. Uh, I know it wasn't really in the details of what you're going through, but I hope this bigger level conversation around it has been helpful and I hope it's helpful for others. And I'll see you guys back here next week.